This is Anna. What? Another swimmer is sick? That makes the 50th one this week. Hmm. I think I know someone who can help. Hello, this is Professor. Hello, Professor. This is Anna. We need your help. A few swimmers are getting sick in the river. Really? Well, I'm working on a water quality experiment right now. I'll be ready in a couple hours. Alright, then I'll head over to your lab in a couple hours. Okay then. Thank you. Bye. We're working on this water quality experiment that you called me about. So do you have an idea what's causing it? Well, I've collected a sample from the river to see if there's a relationship between a certain type of bacteria and the swimmers becoming ill. Bacteria? From what I remember from bi microbiology, there are a lot of bacteria that make people sick. Do you mean you found the one bacteria that makes people sick? No, not as such. When you look at all the different types of protozoans and viruses and other bacteria out there, it's almost impossible to do narrow it down to one type. Then what do you mean about seeing a relationship between the type of bacteria and human illness? Well, it's a hypothesis right now that I hope this experiment will confirm for us, but we won't know until the results come in tomorrow. So I can stop by your office with the results when they come in. All right, that sounds good. See you tomorrow. Until tomorrow. Anna, Anna, I think I found it. There's a relationship between E. coli and people becoming sick. E. coli? The same stuff that's found in our intestines? I thought it didn't make people ill. In all the two circumstances, you're correct. E. coli is only found in the digestive tracts of our warm blood animals. They haven't adapted to live out in the environment on its own. But I don't understand, Professor. How does bacteria not in the environment making people ill? Well, whenever an animal goes to the bathroom, some of that E. coli is carried along for the ride. Here. Boom.
So, you mean... Yes. The people that became sick likely swam in the water that contained fecal waste. <gasps> I know, it's, it's too much to take in, but it's true. The scientists and the government have actually been tracking this for some time, and the latest results just confirmed our, our suspicions. Here, look at the map. Here, for example, is a map of Virginia. This is just one of the states that has this E. coli problem. The thick lines that you see here are areas where we see unusually high levels of E. coli bacteria in the streams and rivers. That looks like a lot of streams and rivers. It is. Currently, it's at 9,154 stream miles. That means that a fifth of Virginia streams and rivers have high levels of E. coli, and that's only the areas that have been sampled so far. The problem can be much, much worse. But how is this E. coli getting into so many streams and rivers? There are a number of sources. In fact, it's too many to easily count. I have some pictures here showing some of the largest sources. This one here is an overflowing sewer line. Usually many sewer lines are located along streams and often overflow due to leaking pipes or flooding during storm events. Here's another major source, allowing farm animals like cows and horses to enter the stream to drink. Often animals will defecate while they're in or close to the water. This picture here shows what happens when someone does not maintain their septic system. Often the systems will fail, resulting in overflows that can enter a nearby water body when it rains. Another major source, at least for urban areas, is providing an ideal environment for large populations of wildlife like geese that live in a small area. Feeding the geese and giving them unobstructed access to water keeps them there year-round and often in much higher numbers than normal. Even people not picking up Fido's deposits during a walk will add to the problem. Gosh, that's a lot of sources. What are we going to do about it? The problem seems to be everywhere. In fact, it's so big that even the scientists and the government can't even find all the sources, let alone being able to do anything about it. It's just too much for us to handle on our own. Hmm. I wonder. Yes, yes, I think I have it. Do you think we could get the public to go out and help us find these sources? Perhaps they can even collect the water and talk to their neighbors about what to do. You think that would stop this monster? Yes. That could work. If we can have the people collect samples for us and report to the local utility whenever they see an overflowing sewer line and, and talk to their neighbors about the importance of fencing out livestock from the stream and, and picking up pet waste, it could help. I think there's time to stop this before it gets worse? I don't know, but I hope so.